Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of TK Monday Minutes. Today we're here with Julia and myself, Tori, and a very special guest. We have Sharon Fitchman here today. She is a pro tennis player, is the 87th ranked doubles tennis player in the world, was out with an injury between 2016 to 2018 and spent her time off coaching as well as broadcasting, but now she's back in the hot seat of the doubles tennis game and we couldn't be more excited to have her here. So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yes. So I guess you just got off the tournament in Houston and I wanted to just start off with telling our viewers how did it go? It was great. It was actually my first time playing in this tournament and uh, it was really nice because I got to play with a friend of mine, uh, Anna Shibahara. Okay. We have practiced together a lot, but we never actually got to compete together. So it was really nice to finish off the year with someone that I get along with so well. Mm -hmm. um, we did really well. We got to the finals, That's super awesome. close. Yeah, we were so close to winning, but we just said, you know what, next time we'll get the better trophy. Um, and it was really cool to look back. A year ago, I barely started playing, and I was playing in events that were a fraction of the size of Houston. So um, overall, it was a nice way to end the season. That's such a lovely way to actually see the progression and, yeah. and the, the growth of people coming to watch. Yeah, totally. I get these like, you know how Facebook is, or, or Instagram is like, oh, memory from a year ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh my God, I was flying to India. <laughs> and like, you know, now it's just like a totally another level. So it's pretty cool. Well, nice. So how did you get into tennis? You know, like, was it something you always wanted to do or like were you influenced by your family members? Like how did it all start? Yeah, um, well, I was, totally sucked in by my parents. Oh, but, really? Yeah, yeah. My Are they tennis players? Well, my dad played in Romania. So they grew up oh, in nice. Romania. Oh. And my dad played like nationally. Um, he loved it. So when they actually came to Canada, I think one of the first things they looked up apparently were like tennis courts mm -hmm. from where oh, wow. we lived. So I was just like kind of shuttled with them every day. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of ended up finding a tennis racket in the junk room of our apartment when we were growing up. And my dad, um, my dad I think was at was at home working, my mom took me to the courts and she had a friend she was playing with. So I just, I think I found a ball that like a dog Probably left. Yeah, and I had like my, my racket ball racket from the junk room and like a, yeah. you know, a dirty ball left by a dog. And I just like humble started, beans. yeah, I just started playing against a wall. There was a wall there and, and I just started playing. I was four, four and oh a half. Oh gosh, that's so young. Yeah, and then apparently after like 20 minutes, my mom looked over and I was four years old, like, rallying not yeah. like like great technique but, but like consistently hitting yeah. the ball to myself like yeah. four or five times in a row and my mom apparently like got off the court ran home <laughs> took me with her obviously mm -hmm. and was like you she have to see something. this girl like yeah. she's so good and then um yeah I, I don't think they let me quit after that I was yeah. like <laughs> grew to love it, right? I did yeah. grow eventually to love but, it for yeah, sure. no, yeah. it's so interesting though was there any ever time where you kind of said Ugh, enough of this like it was more challenging than anything totally yeah okay. there's like more so days than not <laughs> okay. i would say even now i mean it's it's just it's it's such a difficult job I mean, sports is so tough mm -hmm. because like there's so many things day to day you're battling and, and it's it's not just it's not just the sport and, and with tennis it's an opponent you're not just playing an opponent you're you're battling against injuries, you're, you're yeah. mental fatigue, you're in a different city every single the weather, week. The weather, totally, yeah. yeah. And, and like every day you're constantly in pain, you right. know, it, it, sports is, is pushing yourself to the physical limit mm -hmm. every single day and then figuring out how to get up and do it again the next day. Wow. Um, it's very difficult, but it's, it's, you know, it's so rewarding when you achieve your goals, when you mm -hmm. see that all the blood, sweat and tears that you're putting into it is paying yeah. off. And, I think that's sort of the thing. That's like the addicting the part of it. That's yeah. the rush, exactly. And I guess I mean the, it leads into our next question, which was just what does a typical day look like for a pro athlete? But it seems like everything, like every day is different, right? Every like, day is different. Yeah. Not even from a you know what you're going to do that day, but from a mental state as well. Like you could just be on like on top of the world, mm -hmm. waking up one time and have the best game, but then you know just wake up like you said on the like the wrong side of life one day and it could completely affect you. Totally, and so. it, it depends also. Are you am I competing that day or am I right. practicing? Am I home? Am I jet lagged? You know, especially with tennis, um, there's your schedule changes every day. Like yeah. what, especially when you're competing, your match times aren't the exact same every day. Right. Like you can play the night match, finish at one or two in the morning not get to bed till like three or four because of the adrenaline and everything yeah, and then yeah exactly and then you have to play your match at two o'clock the next day mm -hmm. and it's oh, like wow. you didn't sleep as well and you have to deal with that waking mm -hmm. up or you know you tweak something and you got to tape it and wrap it and get used to 
playing with that or so how do you how do you prep for a game day like how do you mentally like make yourself as the best form of yourself during that morning do you have any like superstitions yeah. that you go through um it can be yeah sometimes like i'm pretty predictable with like what i eat so, okay. for example like i'll know okay this feels good so i'll probably stick with that um right sometimes like even outfits uh like yeah. I, i'll wear what my sponsors give me but like i might just stick to the same outfit throughout the tournament because yeah. like, i feel good in it. Got it um but in terms of mental prep like you just gotta be so tough and believe in yourself so much that like, you know what, I don't need to be 100% to win if you don't oh, feel 100%, 100% yeah. and just say like, I just need to be good enough. And that's the thing with tennis is you don't need to be perfect. It's mm -hmm. a sport where you, even your best matches, you're gonna make mistakes, it, mm -hmm. it happens. You just mm -hmm. have to be like 51% on, like right. just a little better than your opponent. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, on days that's where true. like, you just need to kind of get through it and figure it out. You just say, look, like, I don't have to be perfect. I just have to be a little bit better than yeah. that person. Yeah, be so discouraged with that thought. And that's it, yeah. yeah, and just be your best friend out there. Cool, well, I mean, so I guess, Julie, you had a question about broadcasting, because that's kind of a, a cool turn that you've taken in your career. Yeah, so like, how did you, so who are you broadcasting for, and like, how did you get into it, and? Yeah, um, Sportsnet, nice. so nice. I, I was working with them when I stopped playing in 2016, they gave me a shot and uh, I started doing some commentating and broadcasting for them um, for Fed Cup and Rogers Cup. Nice. Um, yeah, so I haven't really been able to work with them since I came back and started playing again, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because it means I'm doing well and I'm busy, but mm -hmm. also I do miss it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's wonderful. I got into it because um, ever since I was kind of a young player, I, I loved, of course, tennis, but I really enjoyed the media part of it. I really did, and I just thought as I got older, I was, was it like the banter afterwards, or talking about the game? Everything. Everything it okay. was the banter, it was the people, it was the, the sharing, you know, it was right. just really fun for me, and I thought, you know, I think that's a side of, of sports that I would love to get into, or at least discover and see if I'm a good fit for, and it was just, it was such an easy transition. I loved it very grateful for the opportunity yeah. I got in the training and, and obviously the fact that the Sportsnet team is so wonderful mm -hmm. that made it like just and relax. we'll most likely welcome you back after you finish which oh, is always yeah. such a yeah. wonderful um, thing to look forward to too yeah. because if you're enjoying it that much and again like we were saying before it comes so naturally to you it comes so easily to you then it's kind of like being on TV for fun almost, exactly right? it's like so. just throw a camera there and yeah. then I'll talk and <laughs> yeah. <do that> anyway. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Sharon, thank you so yes. much for coming in. We would love to speak with you more, but we were good for today. So please definitely follow us along, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Monday Minutes. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.